Hi guys, Mike here. Welcome to episode 3 of the Endless Runner mini-series. In this episode we are going to create and set up our actual run character. So we are going to create a C++ base class for our run character, create a blueprint that inherits from our class, and create and set up camera components in the C++ class, set up the character values in the blueprint class, and get the character into the scene through the game mode. So before we dive in creating our character, let's have a look at that original blueprint project and basically have a look at what this character consists of. So the character inherits from the character base class, which is a pawn, which is an actor, and inherited from that character class we have a capsule component, we have our mesh component, which is a skeletal mesh, which is the character itself, and we have a character movement component. This comes from the character itself. What we need to add is the camera components. So camera boom, it's like a boomstick or it's that with the target arm length and has some offsets. So basically defines where the camera is positioned. And then you have the camera itself. These are all components. And what we are going to have a look at in C++ then is how to create these two components, set them up, set initial values like the socket offset. So this would mean like how kind of like high and low the camera is and set up like settings that the pawn is controlled by the controller or that the arm is controlled by the controller and so on. So these you will see how we can create those components, how we set up default values. So let's get started. So in our project from last time, we still have that run anim instance that we created. And now it's time to create a new class and based on character, we click next and give it a name of run character and create the class. So it's now adding the code to the project, compiling it. And let's have a look in writer when it's done. It's compiled. So this is our code from last time. Let's open up that run character class, make this a little bit bigger. So what we can see here is it created our class, which inherits from character, which has a default constructor, a begin play, the tick, and a setup player input component, which we will talk about in next episode when we are setting up our inputs. So, like I mentioned, we need our components. This was a spring arm component and a camera component that we need to add. So let's add the spring arm component first. We need a U property. This should be visible anywhere. And blueprint read only. It has a category of, let's say, components. And we add a specific meta tag to it called allow private access equals true. In case you don't know what's going on here, um, like I mentioned maybe in last episodes, I have like another playlist where I explain U functions, U properties and other stuff. So if you're just unfamiliar right now what I'm doing, I suggest you go ahead and watch these episodes first to get a real overview of how U properties work, U functions work and so on, and then continue with that series here. So let's forward declare our U spring arm component. It's a pointer and we call it camera arm. And now we're just going to copy this and do the same thing for our camera component, class U camera component, camera component, or let's just call it camera. As you can see, these components, and there are ways to create your own components by inheriting from specific classes. Let's go back for a sec and what you can see here in add component, you can see all these components like skeletal mesh component, static mesh component, a scene component, all this stuff that you can maybe you're familiar with in blueprints and, and add it all the time over here. This is what we can do in C++ by adding these components. And they're basically like for a skeletal mesh component, it's a used skeletal mesh component. So now we declared them. 
but we need to create instances of them in our class. And the only way or the only place that you can do this is in the constructor. So let's go to our constructor and create those two components. So let's start with the camera arm first. Camera arm equals create default sub object. This is the way how you need to create components in your in your constructor. You specify the type, so it's you spring arm component. And then you give it a text and call it camera arm. This is how, uh, the text that will appear that you can see in the blueprints later on when you can see the yeast components. So this is how you create a component in C++. You use the create default sub object with the specific type and a name. And then you can set like defaults. So like we like I mentioned earlier, these the target arm length, for example. We can create default values. Let's select target arm length and set it to 350.f as a float. As you can see, and I mentioned this I think last time as well, if you're using Rider, it automatically includes the component over here. Like what we did, we forward declared so that we don't have to include it over here. It reduces compile times and it's not really necessary to add the header file in our header file, but in our CPP file. And if we want to access these values, these functions, and don't get compiler errors, we need to include this header file for that spring arm component. And the same thing goes later on with other components and other files that we include. You need to forward declare them in your header file and then really include these files in here. And if you don't have Writer in Visual Studio, you need to do this by hand. So you need to figure out, okay, where in the framework these files are. Some files, some components, for example, are under components slash and then scheduled um, mesh component, I think, dot h and so on. So you have to figure that out. A writer in itself here, it's just so helpful that it auto includes it. And now we need to set another default value. It was the socket offset that meant like the height of the camera in, 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 in C value. And we type in a vector. And as you can remember, maybe it was 100 in C. So, and you can see later on when we create the blueprint class that these values are set by default, but you can change them for your own purposes later on. So, and then that the camera arm is controlled by the controller, we need to set the B use pawn control rotation and set it to true. So now we created our component and we set some default values. Now it's re really important. We need to attach it to a default or a root component. And this is how you create those hierarchies. Let's have a look back at our character here. You can see we have the capsule component, which is kind of like our root component. And we have the arrow, the mesh, and the camera boom, which is in that hierarchy under the capsule component. And the follow camera is under the hierarchy of camera boom component. And so you can create these kind of specific hierarchies. The way you do it in C++ is by setting up attachment. And what we can do here is the camera arm call the function setup attachment and for example get the root component because the capsule component that we saw is the root component and it attaches it underneath it as a child. So that's our camera arm. Now we need to create the camera and we will do it the same way. So we need to create to create default sub object, but not as a spring arm component, but as a camera component. And we call this camera. And the only default value that we have to set here is the B use 
upon control rotation as well, but this is false because the camera is controlled not by the controller, but by its arm. And then we set up our attachment. And now we don't add it to the root component, but we need to attach it to our camera arm. So we type in camera arm. And with attachments, with specific classes, they have like sockets, like a camera or a spring arm component has a socket name and we have to use this name to attach our camera to. And the way we do this is accessing a static variable called socket name from our uSpringArm component. And this is the way we set up our character. So to recap, we specified our two components in our header file and we created the components, set up our default values and set up the attachment to place them properly into our component hierarchy. This is it for now for the character. In next episodes, we are going to create input handling, set up inputs and stuff. But for now, let's compile this. Let's go back to our Unreal project, go under Blueprints, because we still need to set up now our Blueprint class and all the default values and the, so let's create a Blueprint class, type in run character. You can see here it's the hierarchy, it's an object, which is an actor, a pawn, character, and now we have our run character. Select this guy, call it BP run character, save it, open it, and you can see here we have our two components that we created in C++. And the capsule, the arrow, the mesh component, and the character movement component, they are all inherited from the character class itself. But as you can see, where is our character? So what we need to do is select our mesh. We need to select our skeletal mesh, our character. And the character is not in the right position. So let's set the C value. Let's rotate our character to minus 90 so that he's facing the forward error that you can see here. And now the only thing that we need to do, or, or let's check this out first. Let's compile, save, and add this character as a default pawn to our game mode open this up. So you can see we have different classes that we can set like a hot class, a player state class. And here we have our default pawn class, which we call BP run character. And what we have here is a, in our play level that we created in the first episode, let's put this back is our player start. And our, in our world settings, we have the game mode override to our specific game mode. And that means that when the game runs, the character or the pawn is spawned directly onto that player start position. So let's hit play for a sec. And you can see our character is placed in there, but there is of course no animation. Let's stop it. And this would mean like, at least he should be idle. He's not moving, we are adding movement the next episode, but he should at least, based on the plant space that we created and the anim instance, it should play in idle. So let's go back to our mesh and you can see here, use animation blueprint is selected, but our class is not selected. So let's call, get, we called it BA mannequin. So select this one and you can see automatically he's in idle mode, save it go back to our main level, hit play, and at least now he is idling. So now in this episode, we created our blueprint character, our C++ base class. We created a blueprint on top of it, set up our, all our components, the camera and the target arm. And I guess that's it for today. And next episode, we will set up our input handling, our inputs, the methods that are called, and get this guy running the next episode. So thank you for watching. Please like and subscribe this episode and the channel and hit the bell if you want to get notified for new episodes coming out. So thanks again. I hope you enjoyed it. If you have any questions, please leave them in a the comment. I gladly answer any questions that you have. So see you in the next one.